Okay, this is the last podcast of our solution unit, and it is talking about solution stoichiometry on page 16. And even though you probably saw that word stoichiometry and we're not too happy about this, it is just three problems. It's not that bad. And there's not actually any new stoic conversions that we're learning. So hopefully it really will be a lot easier than it has been in the past. So these solution stoichiometry problems are only special solution problems because in these chemical reactions, we usually have solutions, meaning aqueous substances. And what that means is that the measurements we're using aren't going to be necessarily measured in grams and moles like we're used to. It might be uh, molarity and volume that are being given to us. So if you're given that molarity or volume, uh, that other information about a solution, you're going to need to use that information to find moles. If you see a chemical reaction, you're going to do dimensional analysis and stoichiometry, and that's all about finding the mole. So you're just going to use this molarity equation, this moles divided by liters thing that we've talked about just last time, and use that to solve for your moles, and then you can use those moles in your dimensional analysis. Now, sometimes it might ask you to find a molarity or to find a volume. That means that you're going to do some dimensional analysis, use that to find moles, and then plug that into our molarity equation as your moles, and use that to solve for liters or molarity. Now, it could give you some information about that solution, that molarity or volume, and then ask you for molarity or volume, but in the end, turn it into moles, do your stoichiometry, turn it back into molarity or volume, whatever it's asking for. So let's get started with these problems. It asks us to calculate the concentration. So right off the bat, I am trying to find molarity. This is going to be our big capital M. Molarity is what I'm looking for. So that's probably going to mean doing that dimensional analysis, stoichiometry stuff first, and then doing that molarity equation, but you know, just thinking ahead. And it does go ahead and give me this volume in milliliters of a sulfuric acid solution that reacts with excess barium chloride that's aqueous and forms 2.5 grams of precipitate. Okay then, so at least I'm starting with grams. I know I've got grams here, but I don't know what that grams is of and I kind of need to know what the substance is before I can find the molar mass on the periodic table because I already know if I've got grams, I've got to cancel it out with that molar mass from the periodic table. It's the same stuff we've always done in stoichiometry and dimensional analysis. It just got grams, get rid of them, turn them into moles. So I've got a plan, but this plan is going to have to start with us writing a balanced equation so that we can turn these grams into moles turn these moles into some other moles because in order to find this molarity and volume I'm going to have to first figure out my moles of sulfuric acid in order to be able to use my molarity equation. So balanced equation it tells us that this sulfuric acid which I know is an acid formula and we haven't reviewed those in a while so I'll just help you out. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4 says that reacted with excess barium chloride, which is BaCl2, and that formula just came from the fact that barium had a plus two charge and chlorine had a minus one. So those cross dropped, reduced, switched sides. And now to predict these products, we have to take the first element from the first compound, which is H, the second element from the second compound, which is Cl, and put them together. They do not bring their numbers with them. Both of those twos were because the thing that they were with had a plus two or a minus two charge. But H and Cl are just a plus one and a minus one, so they cancel each other out. And they're good just like that. And then whatever else is there is going to be our other product. So we have SO4 and BA, but we have to make sure to keep BA at the beginning of that formula. It always stays in the same position. It was at the beginning of BaCl2. It's going to be at the beginning of our barium sulfate as well. And kind of like I just mentioned, 
barium has a plus two charge, so does sulfate. So those just cancel out and go away. We don't have to cross drop produce at all. So this is our formula. It's not quite balanced. I am going to go ahead and put this little two, squeeze that right in there, make sure it shows up without covering anything up to get that balanced. And now we're still not quite there because it asked us, or it gave us 2.5 grams of our precipitate. And I don't know which one of these is a precipitate until I find their states of matter. So we're going to do that real quick, looking at our periodic table on the back. Don't have to check these first two because our two reactants are always going to be aqueous. And it does tell us that they're solutions and specifically says barium chloride is aqueous in the problem. So I'm really just checking my two products. Cl is in the soluble section. H is not an exception. So it is soluble, meaning it is aqueous. Barium sulfate, looking at the sulfate part, sulfate is also in the soluble section, but barium is an exception. So that pulls it over into being insoluble, which means this is our solid. This is our precipitate. So back there in the problem where it says that we had 2.5 grams of precipitate, really that's 2.5 grams of barium sulfate. So now I've got something I can work with. I'm going to take those 2.5 grams of barium sulfate, go to the periodic table and add up that molar mass. One barium, one sulfur, and oops, not a zero there, three nine, and four oxygens all adds up to that 233 number. That's how many grams per mole we have, but the gram part is the only part that goes on bottom. The per mole means we put one mole of that same stuff on top. Now we've gotten grams into moles. That is automatically what I do every single time I have grams given to me. But now we need to focus on answering the question. It wants us to find concentration, which like we said before, is going to revolve around finding moles first of sulfuric acid. So that's this H2SO4 stuff. So now that I have moles, I can use this balanced equation to convert from one substance to another. Now, there's no numbers in front of either of these substances. They're both blanks. They didn't get a 2 like the HCl did. But remember, blanks mean 1s. You don't have to fill them in, but you have to be able to use them down here. So what that was telling us was that one mole of barium sulfate is equal to one mole of sulfuric acid. Numbers doesn't change with that one and that one, but the substance will, and that's the key. So now, if I do this calculation, I'll be able to get my moles of sulfuric acid. Um, and that's a big long number. I really should just be keeping three sig figs here to match that 25 or 2.50 that I started with. So really my answer here is 0 0.0107 moles. Now that's not really my answer, that's just my moles because I'm going to use those in my molarity equation right up here to solve for the concentration, that molarity that it actually asked us for. So I'm going to start with that 0 0.0107 here then I need to be dividing by volume, but I need to be careful because the volume has to be in liters. So to change this milliliters to liters, I need to move this decimal left three times, which means filling in one of these spots with that zero. So I'm going to be dividing by 0 0.025 liters. So now when I do this 0 0.0107 divided by 0 0.025, Try to make sure that ends up underneath the numbers. We get 0 0.428 as our answer, and that is actually three sig figs. And um, even though this 25 looks like it's two, it's because I accidentally dropped that zero. But as it was written up here, this number did have three sig figs, and I just shouldn't have dropped that zero if I wanted to keep it. Uh, I shouldn't have. So 
adding our units for molarity there at the end gives us our answer. So, a <sighs> little bit long, but the dimensional analysis and stoichiometry part is the same. It's just kind of figuring out how to use the information that you've got to the best effect. So, let's work another one. Okay, so in this problem, it tells me that I have 171 milliliters of this molarity of lead nitrate. So I'm just going to start writing this stuff out as we get it. Lead to nitrate is going to look like this. And that tells me it's aqueous and it reacts with a certain concentration of lithium chloride aqueous solution. What volume of the lithium chloride solution is needed to react completely with the lead nitrate solution? So, um, we need to figure out what their products are so we can get this balanced correctly. So, lead is going to keep its plus two charge that it had from being lead to nitrate before, and it's going to become lead to chloride, which does happen to be insoluble, so we mar mark it as a solid. Then we're also going to make lithium nitrate, plus one and a minus one, gets us that formula, and this is super aqueous. And then just making sure that this is all balanced. Looks like I need a two there, and a two there. And that should be it. I'll fill these in with ones just for later. Okay, so this is telling me I need a certain amount of this stuff and we want to figure out how much of this stuff we need to react with that completely and perfectly. So notice it doesn't give me moles or grams. So I'm going to have to use the molarity equation to get into that dimensional analysis and stoichiometry. And when I'm done, it's asking for volume. So I'm going to have to use the molarity equation to get out of it as well. So first step is to find moles of this lead nitrate solution. Then I can change that into moles of lithium chloride and then plug those moles back in to this molarity equation. So um, let's do this. Rearranging that equation to solve for moles is gonna be molarity times volume. So I'm gonna take and making sure that that volume is in liters, of course. So that's gonna be 0.171 times 0 0.450 and that gives me a 0 0.07695 moles and I'm just going to round that to 770 moles right there just to save a little bit of space. So I have that many moles of my lead nitrate. Now according to this reaction one mole of lead nitrate is needed to react with two moles of lithium chloride. So all we've got to do here is that one quick little step. That one on the bottom with the lead nitrate, the two on the top with the lithium chloride. And so we're basically taking that number we just got and multiplying it by two. Gives us 0.154 moles of lithium chloride. Now we're going to bring this back around here because it asked us what the volume needed and it wants it in milliliters so I'll address that in a second is needed to react with 2.25 molar lithium chloride. So if I'm solving for volume with my molarity equation I keep forgetting to write that as liters because that's what I've tried to do for you guys. Um, in this molarity equation, the liters is going to be equal to moles over our molarity. And then we'll have to change that into milliliters, of course. So our moles was 0.154. My molarity was that 2.25, which means that that's 0.06. 84 liters technically as my answer and then moving our decimal three places back 
to turn that into liters is going to be 68, or sorry, to turn it into milliliters from liters, 68.4 milliliters is our answer. So turning that back into milliliters is not something that I'm generally going to ask you to do, but that is the unit that's more convenient for us in the lab. That's what we measure things in more commonly in a normal chemistry uh, lab. But maybe in industry you'd measure things in liters. But So a little bit of molarity at the beginning and the end, but not too bad overall, hopefully. Okay, so I went ahead and I wrote out this reaction. It tells us that I had 20 milliliters of a 0 0.150 molar silver nitrate solution that's being added to 30 milliliters of a 0.2 molar sodium chloride solution. So it gives us information about both of the things that we're putting in there together and then tells us that it makes a precipitate. Now you can tell that my precipitate is here and it wants us to calculate the number of grams of precipitate, so AGCl, that's being formed. When you first look at this, you might be confused and wonder which numbers should I be using here? Well, this is one of those pesky problems where it gave you two pieces of information about two different givens. You're actually supposed to use both of them. This is what we call a limiting reactant problem. Um, so you're going to use each of these pieces of information here to calculate moles for that specific substance. And then we're going to take these moles of these substances separately and turn them each into grams of AGCl. And remember for limiting reactance problems, when you work out two problems and get two answers, we choose the smaller answer. So this is kind of my breakdown of what I plan on doing, and now I'm going to go ahead and do this in steps and kind of explain it after I've set up each of these steps, because they're going to kind of follow each other through. Okay, so at this point I've just taken these two numbers that they gave us for each of our substances. Here our silver nitrate, and underneath it our sodium chloride, and to find moles for each of those substances, I need to multiply together the molarity times the volume. Just make sure that volume's in liters, so that 20 milliliters turns into 0.0200. 30 turns into 0.0. Oop, I dropped a zero there. But luckily, I have the right zeros in my answer. Um, so this has gotten us moles of each of our reactants. And so this number right here for each of them is going to be the start of our dimensional analysis. And hopefully we can fit what we need to in this little bitty space. And working this out and setting it up together, the next thing we need to do now that we have moles of each of our reactants is turn that into our moles of our precipitate. So these are going to look very similar. Let me go ahead and set those up. Okay, and there they are. Now we have moles of AGCl for each of them. This is just a one-to-one -one reaction, so those all look pretty similar. Now our last step is to find grams of that precipitate. So in each situation, we're going to be putting one mole of that AGCl on bottom, and then we just had to add up Ag plus Cl. That gets us 143.321 grams of AGCl. And that's it. No, this one is probably getting covered up, but it's just one mole down there on the bottom and that same 143 number on top. So that's our dimensional analysis. We get our two answers out. This one is 0.4299, so that's going to be 0.430 grams, and the second calculation turns out to be 0 0.8599, uh, which is bigger, and we always choose the smaller answer, so we are going to stick with this nicely rounded answer we got to the first one. This is nothing. So, there we go. Now, 
I'm not going to ask you to do a whole lot of these limiting reactant problems because it's really just doing twice as much work. Um, and especially when I can't grade your work super well right now, um, I'm not going to rely on you to just do twice as much work to get the same amount of answer. So um, you will see one of these on the next page of your packet. But I went ahead and omitted question number five, the last question on the last page of your practice, um, just to help it not take quite so long. So practice this. Look at what you've got. Um, if it's grams and moles, it's just normal stoichiometry. It's just that molarity and volume stuff that you're going to have to use to find moles. So good luck and let me know where you have uh, any issues, where you need help.